Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series on group theory. In this video, I'm going to talk about group homomorphisms and isomorphisms. So we're dealing with groups, so we want to be able to talk about ways in which two different groups can be similar or the same as one another. In the last video, I talked about a couple of specific groups. Uh, Z is the group of the integers. And a particular subgroup of the group under, a, under multiplication of the rational numbers, um, which was the powers of 2. We'll call this P for power. And so this was all the powers of 2 in the rational numbers. This would be things of the form 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. So, as you might be able to figure out, these groups have similar structure. So in Z, uh, you would say that 2 plus 3 equals 5. In P, uh, whose operation, uh, as we talked about last time, is multiplication, you would say, you would say that uh, 4 times 8 is 32. Um, or if you wanted to use exponential forms, 2, to the two times 2 to the 3 equals 2 to the 5. So you can see there's... there's um, some, uh, some way in which the structure of z is represented in p. Uh, we can formalize this using a function from z to p. We'll call this function phi. Where phi of x equals 2 to the x. Uh, as you can see, z contains all the integers and p contains all the uh, numbers of the form 2 to, to an integer, both positive and negative integers. So this function is well defined. Uh, because, uh, so the function phi has the property that phi of x plus y for any x and y in the integers is equal to phi of x times phi of y under the multiplication of p. Uh, now this preservation of structure um, is, the, is the main property of a group isomorphism. So z and p are what are formally called isomorphic groups, and the, f the function phi between them is the isomorphism. So an isomorphism is just a uh, function which is bijective in that it has an inverse. Uh, or equivalently, equivalently that it maps to the whole of P, it's, it's on two, and that it maps a single element to a single element, it's one to one. Um, any homomorphism has to be, uh, isomorphism, sorry, has to be bijective and and has to preserve group structure in that um, the, the, the function taken on an operation of two elements, so in the case of z, where the operation addition is 5x plus y, sends to the operation in the, uh, the, the group, which is the range uh, of the images of those two elements. Uh, since p has multiplication, it's 5x times 5y. Huh. Additionally, it has to send the inverse of every element to, uh, to uh, the, the inverse of the image of the original element. So, in z, uh, two gets uh, two gets sent to four, um, but negative two, which is the inverse of two in z, gets sent to one over four, which is the inverse of four in p. So this is an isomorphism. Uh, more generally, you can have um, similarities between the structure groups uh, represented by homomorphisms. These are just the same as isomorphisms, um, but the difference is that they don't need to be bijected. That all they all they need to do is preserve structure. So a homomorphism, homomorphism doesn't need to map to the whole of the range group and it do, or the codomain group rather, and it, and it doesn't need to send every element. Uh, it, it doesn't need to. It, it can send two elements to the same element. It doesn't need to be, need to be one one to one.
So um, some examples of homomorphisms that aren't isomorphisms is that if we, if, if we take phi, but we change the codomain group instead of p, which is just 2 to the everything in z, if we change this to the, to the, to the group q of the rationals, now, still, every element in Z is sent to only one, or, or every element which, is, which something is sent to in Q is sent to by only one element in Z. However, not every element in Q is sent to by phi uh, from some element in Z. This means that uh, this new version of phi we have isn't surjective, it isn't onto two. And that means that it can't have an inverse because, uh, say, one third is an element in Q which isn't a power of two and is thus not in the image of phi, uh, and thus any inverse of phi would have to send one third somewhere, but it can't because one third is not a power of two. Um, note that um, there are, you, you, you can make a function which um, composes with phi and sends everything back to z. However, this isn't a proper inverse because if you compose it the other way around, then it'll send, it, 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 if we call this thing rho, uh, which sends, then rho of phi sends z to z. And this will be the identity on z, but phi of rho phi of rho won't set, won't uh, send everything in Q to Q because phi can only send things to powers of two, and so anything which has phi on the outside can only send things to power of two. So uh, an example of a homomorphism that is on two but is not one to one is would be um, I'm going to erase this for now. So we have the group z times z, which is the group of the group of ordered pairs of elements in z and whose operation we'll call it circle plus. whose operation is just the, pair, the pairwise sum of elements in, um, the pairwise sum of the two elements in each ordered pair. Um, so this is a group, and we can make a map, uh, call it uh, Psi. Uh, which which uh, it has domain of Z times Z and codomain of Z uh, which sends which sends uh, every pair to its first component. Since every pair can have a uh, can have one of its uh, since every element in Z can be the first component of one of these pairs, this is going to be on two, but it's not one to one because it sends one. It sends both of these to the number one. However, this is a homomorphism because uh, the, the, the sum in the first component uh, is still the group operation of Z, and this basically just forgets everything, everything that's going on in the second component. And so everything's inverse uh, gets sent to it, 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 everything's inverse gets sent to its inverse. So negative x, negative y would be sent to negative x, whereas x, y would be sent to x, and x has a negative x as inverse. Um, and uh, this sum gets sent to x plus y, but um, this and this sum is x plus y. So it's a homomorphism. Um, so uh, another interesting uh, set of homomorphisms is homomorphisms which send one group to itself. So
if we have alpha, Uh, sending from z to z where alpha of x equals 2x. And we have beta These are both homomorphisms. Um, I won't go through it, but, but it's basically just because um, multiplication distributes over addition. So you can, uh, you, can, you, you, you can sort of work that out for yourself. So alpha here sends uh, the integers to the even integers because um, of some wonkiness with infinity. The integers and the even integers are the same size. Um, however, this is not an isomorphism because any inverse of alpha um, doesn't know where to send one uh, or any other odd number. Uh, however, beta is an isomorphism in that uh, because every element is, is assigned to its own unique inverse, Every element has an inverse. Every inverse of an element is the inverse of some other element. Um, it just flips the integers um, symmetrically. And uh, actually, beta is its own inverse. Beta composed with beta is the identity transformation. But you can't have an inverse for alpha that's one half x because that would send one to one half, which isn't in z. And I drop my chalk. I'll think of another piece of chalk. So, um, a homomorph a homomorphism that uh, has the same domain and codomain group is called an endomorphism. And a, and a homomorphism, which is an isomorphism and an endomorphism, is called an automorphism. So uh, before the end of the video, some uh, other useful properties of homomorphisms. Uh, so a homomorphism always sends the identity to identity. So we have phi of E, uh, where E is, and phi sends G to H. Uh, a, a homomorphism will always send the identity of the domain group to the identity of the codomain group because we have to have phi of e, phi of e plus e equals phi of e plus phi, plus phi of e, um, and the only element which is the sum of it and itself in, in any group is the identity. Uh, another, uh, another notable thing is that um, the set of points in H, we'll call it, um, The image of phi, which is equal to the the set of points in H which are sent to or are the image of some uh, element of G, um, the set of elements in H, uh, that is going to be a subgroup of H called the image of phi. Uh, finally, um, it's noteworthy that any two isomorphic groups, uh, groups which, are, which have an isomorphism between them, have to be of the same size if they're finite, um, and the same sort of cardinality, which is a, a set theoretic uh, version of size, if they're infinite. So you can't have an infinite isomorphic group be isomorphic to a finite, isomor a finite group, and you can have a group order of size 7 be isomorphic to a group of size 5. And those are the basics of isomorphisms and homomorphisms. Thank you for watching this video in our series on group theory. Click down there to view our playlist containing the rest of the videos in this series. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can not miss any more of our Center of Math videos. And click here to visit our website to check out more of our mathematics resources.